Okay, today we're talking about the heavy vehicle factor. This is the equation that we're going to use, but before we go any further, let's take a step back. The heavy vehicle factor converts all of these different types of vehicles into one vehicle unit. And so if I were to look at everything that I have drawn here, all of these different types of truck, the car, the motorcycle, everything can be described as being a vehicle. But if we're going to just take a subset of all the vehicles shown, these three are what we call passenger cars or automobiles or something that is mostly passenger related on an individual basis. And so our goal is to convert all the vehicle types that could possibly be on a road into passenger cars so that we are only dealing with one type of unit and we can design for that unit, but still account for all the different types of vehicles. We're going to use this equation, which has these variables in it, to convert vehicles into passenger cars. But first, let's talk about a couple of scenarios. The vehicles shown here are not passenger cars. So that means the truck, the bus, and this recreational vehicle here would all need to be converted into a passenger car equivalent unit. And sometimes that is written as PCE, passenger car equivalent unit. Okay, please forgive my elementary drawing. Uh, I know I'm no Picasso, but I think I do well. You know, at least my mother says so. Or maybe she's support to, supposed to say that. But anyway, uh, we have a truck here and we have these three passenger cars. Now, if you can picture yourself driving on a road, you can probably picture a case like this where two passenger cars can fit in the same amount of space traveling, you know, a, the given speed that most of them would travel as one truck. And that's on level ground. You take that same truck and now you allow it to travel uphill or it's in a situation where it has to travel a, a steep incline. And then the number of vehicles or passenger cars that can travel in that same amount of space is now increased because that truck is going to slow down. It's going to be a little bit harder for that truck to travel at a certain speed up a steep incline. But those passenger cars will be able to do it at a lot uh, easier pace. And therefore, they will probably fit more passenger cars in the same amount of space, you know, moving space as a truck. And so that is the whole reason why we need to have a heavy vehicle factor. This is your heavy vehicle and it is basically taking up the same amount of space, moving space as these four vehicles or passenger cars that are traveling uphill. The same will apply for passenger cars traveling downhill in comparison to those types of heavy vehicles traveling downhill. So if I wanted to convert these heavy vehicles into passenger cars, then I would have to take the number of vehicles and simply divide by a heavy vehicle factor. That's the same factor that was shown at the very beginning. Let's take, for example, this situation you had 2,000 vehicles all together including all different types and you had a heavy vehicle factor of 0 0.8 but you wanted all of those vehicles to be represented in passenger car equivalent units and so in order to do that you just take the 2,000 vehicles and you divide it by the heavy vehicle factor of 0 0.8 and then you end up with 2,500 vehicles now or passenger cars I should say um, and so what this is saying is that those 2000 vehicles, if we were to convert them all into being represented as passenger cars, it, it's equivalent to being 2,500 passenger cars on that road. So a natural question would be, where do you get that heavy vehicle factor? Uh, how do you calculate it? Well, this is again, the equation, uh, I showed you what those uh, variables were. Um, but these variables here is E sub T's and the E sub R, they can be found from tables. And so you get those two variables from tables. And I'll show you a couple. The first one is right underneath. 
this is a table that's just a general general factor so if generally speaking you know that you're in a location that's really flat let's say a florida or a uh, louisiana texas anything really deep south then you know that you'll be using a 1.5 for the e sub t and a 1.2 for the e sub r but if you're in a rolling area let's just say a place like virginia um, maybe parts of tennessee then you'll use 2.5 and 2.0 and let's say you're going over the mountain and so really really steep heat inclines then you'll be using 4.5 or 4.0 now again that's for uh, very general terms but you have some really specific tables that get um that can get you an estimate that's more realistic to uh specific areas and so if you wanted to know what the e sub t that is the equivalency factor for trucks and buses all right so it's the equivalency factor for trucks and buses this is your equivalency factor for rvs or recreational vehicles but let's just start off with the trucks and buses combined if you wanted some really specific information let's just say you knew exactly uh the length that you'll be you'll be traveling and you knew exactly the percent um of grade that you have then you'll go to these specific tables for the trucks and buses and that's going uphill you also have specific tables for the trucks and buses going downhill okay and again you have to know specific lengths and and this and, and the percentage of grade you'll be able to figure out what your e sub t's are for that then you have specific tables for rvs uh, going uphill all right you got your specific length you know the, this percent grade then you'll be able to figure out what your e sub r should be in this original equation just by looking at those tables once again you have specific tables for rvs or anything that operates like an rv or a recreational vehicle u-haul vehicle whatever it may be you have specific tables for upgrades and here is a specific table for downgrades there isn't any so but you do have an understanding that those types of vehicles when they're going downhill or in downgrade perform the same way as they normally would if they were on level ground and so whenever we're looking for the equivalency factor for rvs we're going to use a 1.2 that is something to keep in mind and to remember because when you look at the 1.2 It acts the same way downhill as it does when it's on level ground. Let's approach this example problem that wants us to represent this traffic stream or this traffic mix in passenger cars. And you can see it's 600 vehicles. Uh, of those 600 vehicles, uh, 60 of them are buses, 30% of them are trucks, and 5% five of, of them are RVs. And so we want to condense all of that into being represented into one type of unit and that's passenger cars. And so the first thing I know I'm going to need is the heavy vehicle factor equation. So let me write that down. So now I have it written down here. I got the heavy vehicle factor equation and I just have some open spots here that I need to fill in. Okay, so I have that written down here. I have some of the information just to remind us what was given and I have the heavy vehicle factor is equal to this entire equation here there are a couple of uh spaces here that we have to fill in um this first one is your p sub t and this is your percentage of trucks and buses all right i don't know why it's just written as t but we should just put p sub t and b there so percentage of trucks and buses so if you look up here we see that we're given 10 percent buses 30 percent trucks so all together that's 40 percent but we're going to write it in decimal form so that's 0 0.4 all right um, this is should be your equivalency for trucks and buses and just to remind you um, that was on rolling so on rolling hill or rolling terrain uh, we'll come back to that later this is your percentage of rvs rv type vehicles Right now, we can see that it's 5%, so we're going to use 0 0.05 here. And then, last but not least, you have your equivalency factor for those RV-type vehicles that are traveling on rolling terrain. 
Now, in order to figure that out, we're going to refer to the tables, the general tables, because we're getting general information, not specific information. And if we look at these general tables that you've seen before, we can see here that on rolling terrain, we have 2.5 equivalency factor for your trucks and buses and a 2.0. So picture this as if you're on rolling ter terrain, the amount of space that um, that one truck is traveling uh, is the equivalent amount of space that 2.5 automobiles or passenger cars can travel. So that's the one way of looking at it. So I could just put that 2.5 right here and the 2.0 right here and I will end up calculating out this to be 0 0.606. All right, so that's my heavy vehicle factor. Now, remember, I wanted to convert all of these vehicles, 600 vehicles, into being represented just by passenger cars. And so I can take that 600 and divide it by 0 0.606, and that will give me the equivalent of 990 passenger cars. Okay, so 600 vehicles that are made up of this type of traffic mix is equivalent to 990 passenger cars traveling on rolling terrain. Let's take a look at another example that's a little bit more specific. Uh, we have uh, a freeway now there's 1500 vehicles on that freeway uh, it's sort of a rolling freeway but we know exactly how long uh, the uphill or, uh, uh, incline is and how long the decline is uh, there's zero buses and zero RVs and so what we want to do is convert all of those vehicles into being represented as passenger car units so that we can have one unit that we're working with and calculating other things such as the number of lanes or the type of uh, traffic control that we may need at the ramp or whatever else may need that one unit so that we're all staying consistent. And so what we need to do in order to make that conversion is figure out what the heavy vehicle factor should be. And so that is this formula that we will be writing out later on. Um, within the formula, we need to know two main things. One is the equivalency factor for the trucks and buses and RVs and also the percentages of trucks and buses and RVs. So let's start off with looking at the tables to figure out what the equivalency factor should be for trucks and buses. Now you know that the trucks have a representation of 40% within that traffic stream, but we don't have any buses and RVs, so we really don't have to worry about that. But just for the sake of practice, we'll go through them. Key thing here is to make sure you're using an operating with the same or the correct table right here we have upgrades we got trucks and buses and if you remember before we knew we were going four percent upgrade uphill and we were doing that for about a mile and so let's make sure that we're in the right column and the right row here so when we say four percent this column shows us is anything that's greater than three up to four this one is anything that's greater than four up to five and so since we know we're right at 4%, we're in that row. Now within that row, we have subsets. And the subsets are basically defined by the length. And so the length that we have is one mile. So we have one mile. So within this row, we're on this subset of this row. And now we just have to make sure we're getting the percentages correct. And so uh, you have 2% all the way up to 25% shown. But of course, we wanted the 40%. And... What you'll notice is that once you get past 15, they pretty much stay the same here. So I know that at one mile and 4% upgrade, I'm probably going to stay close to a 2.0 as my equivalency factor for the trucks. Now let's figure out what the equivalency factor is for the trucks and buses going downhill. In this case, all we need to know is the trucks. And so going downhill, we know that we had a percent grade of 4%. I'm going downhill so we know that this is less than four so here we have four to five here and four to five here uh, it's going to be any one of these two rows here but uh, when we define the length that we're uh, looking at 
which is going to be less than 4. That's a one mile length, so it's less than 4. So we know we're going to be using this row of this table. And again, the percentage of trucks, um, even at 40%, doesn't look like it's going to change. And so the equivalency factor for the equivalence for the percentage of 40% uh, of trucks, it's going to be 1.5 going down here. Okay, so now here are all those var values filled in. You got your heavy vehicle factor uphill. Uh, I put in the two that we found from the tables going uphill. And um, I can place anything in here. It doesn't matter because I know that there's zero RV type vehicles. So that whole part of that equation goes to zero. So now I'm just dealing with like that half of the equation. And so calculating all of this out, that ends up equaling out to 0 0.7. One as my heavy vehicle factor going uphill. Now I can do the same thing. I'll just use a different number going downhill. As we found from those tables, we have 1.5 going downhill. Um, and again, this whole thing goes to zero because there are zero percentages of RVs. Um, but even if they weren't a zero percent of RVs, I know that the table for RVs going downhill is always going to be 1.2. So I didn't need to look up a table. I know to always remember that. But just looking at that half of the equation, uh, the heavy vehicle factor ends up being 0.83. Okay, so I have two different heavy vehicle factors, one going uphill, one going downhill. And what that will show us when we convert everything over is that the effect of heavy vehicles going uphill is different than the effect of heavy vehicles going downhill in terms of the same amount of space or the equivalent amount of space that a passenger car would take up. So let's do that calculation really quick. Okay, so here it is. We have the passenger car equivalents going uphill, and we have the passenger car equivalents going downhill. All right, so if we take the 1500 vehicles and divide it by the heavy vehicle factor going uphill, those 1500 vehicles going uphill is the, just like having 2000 passenger cars going uphill. Doing the same thing for down, downhill, those 1,500 vehicles made up of 40%, of which 40% are trucks, is just like having 1,800 or close to 1,800 passenger cars going downhill. And so uh, that makes sense because uh, going downhill is a lot easier for those trucks or those heavy vehicles to travel and therefore they won't take up as much traveling space going downhill as they would if they were going uphill. I think there's one thing worth noting that we're seeing on a lot of our uh, nation's freeways and, and major highways is that uh, there's been much more of an increase in the uh, amount of truck percentages that are uh, taking place or that are using the, the traveling facilities um, such as freeways and highways. Um, uh, I know in one case, uh, we may have estimated that there was 20% um, and we've outgrown that estimate to about 40%. But let's just take a look at if we were to do this same exact problem here and just use 20%, what would that change in terms of the outcome of the solution? Well, if we only use 20%, we would use 0.2 here, 0.2 here which would eventually give us a 0.83 for heavy vehicle factors going uphill, 0.9 for heavy vehicle factors going downhill. Uh, using those values and figuring out the equivalency unit, the passenger car equivalency uh, going uphill, we would change the heavy vehicle factor and ultimately end up at 1,807, whereas before um, we found it to be 2,000. So there's more than 200 um, passenger car difference so it's a 300 passenger car approximately 300 passenger car gap in terms of what we may have estimated in the in the past and what we are currently experiencing in the present and so that 300 you know gap is really felt because your facility may have only been designed to meet that 20 percent which is what uh it was designed for the 1800 but now it's a lot higher. Um, similarly, going downhill, you can look at 0 0.9, place it here, 1500 divided by the 0 0.9. Now, whereas uh, it was designed for, could have been designed for 1648 vehicles, now we're looking at 
um, what, 150, about roughly 150 vehicles extra um, that is felt on the facility going downhill just because of that estimate um, not being true to what it actually exists. And so um, just something to think about. Uh, if you get your percentages wrong or if your forecast is wrong, then, of course, that is going to be felt on the, in the facility. So as a quick recap, we want to be able to represent all of the vehicles that may be on the road in one single type of unit. And we got to provide enough lanes for all of those types of units. And so because trucks will be forced to slow down as they progress upgrade, they'll create gaps in the stream. And we want to understand what those gaps really mean in terms of moving a large amounts of vehicles. And the only way to do that is to convert everything into one single unit, such as a passenger car or automobile. And we do that by using something called the heavy vehicle factor. And that's the equation that we use. Here are the variables and what they mean. And by using that equation, we can convert the heavy vehicle factors. I'm sorry. We can convert the vehicles into passenger car equivalents, provided we have the correct tables to use.